thank you all for subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me. Because the soccer game was much appreciated, I will create some episodes where we will turn this game into a FIFA worthy version. I have also made the full project available on GitHub. We share everything to make the best games together. Check the link in the description. In this video we will cover the following topics. I enjoyed filling the stadium with 3D models of spectators, but even this low poly model had some performance cost. The goal is to create a game with maximum playability, so I threw this idea overboard and now we will use billboards instead. Billboards require way less 3D calculations and look cool from a distance. I need some images of uh, sitting people. It would be fun to create uh, our, our own photographs of uh, friends you know and uh, having them sit. But for now I'm gonna use uh, an image from internet. So um, this one doesn't really qualify for example because it has chairs on it and um, I want to make the background um, transparent but this one is uh, is uh, okay so um, I copy this picture and uh, in uh, um, paint.net I'm gonna edit it so I'm gonna select um, this background and I'm gonna remove it and then we need uh, some time to um, remove all this um, Uh, all this uh, stuff that we don't want uh, to make the image uh, perfectly transparent uh, but once that's done we can uh, copy the the people and uh, create uh, images of them um, so let's put them into a new image and you can uh, shuffle them so uh, move from one uh, person to another place and so on so you have a bit of difference there you need to have a bit of variations you can also um, just um, flip the image and use this this is already different than the previous uh, image and we can also uh, change the color for example this dress we can uh, change the color of that uh, you need a bit more time to make it perfect but I'm just gonna show you some suggestions um, we can for example uh, just the, uh, the color the hue to make it a yellow dress or green or whatever let's go for blue so um, That way we can uh, create uh, different images. So I've uh, created um, six variations of the uh, people, um, just PNG images. Now we're gonna convert these into sprites. Now we're gonna create some material over here. Let's uh, call it mid people. Um, and we're gonna assign the um, base map. Now I'm gonna create a copy and I'm gonna set the uh, other base maps as well. Um. So 
a bit hard to see but uh, I think I set them properly now um, so now we have um, six materials now we can create a plane so let's just create a simple plane and put uh, the material on it now there's only one more thing that we need to do is we need to change the shader for this material into a sprite shader and now we can uh, resize the um, the plane so something like this and put it uh, in the right position something like this so now we see the people sitting uh, in the stadium um, it looks quite nice uh, we can now um, copy this and um, use um, a second material for this plane Actually, it's better to not use the mirrored one because you see now that we have two green ladies over here. So I'm going to use a different one. So I'm going to create as much variation as I can. And then I'm going to fill up uh, all of this, uh, all of this uh, stadium. So um, Let's change the name into spectator. And we're going to put them in here in a, a game object called spectators. Don't forget to reset this transform if it hasn't done, been done yet. And then um, insert these. Now we can select them both and create another copy. And this way we can uh, fill the stadium quite qu quite quickly. So you see how we can quickly fill our stadium with people <coughs> and it looks quite nice. I've created a new scene with a menu. This um, scene consists of three canvases, actually four canvases, but um, these three are displayed not all together but one by one. So when you start uh, the game you will see that you need to select the game mode. I've chosen uh, to implement um, a player versus player, so a multiplayer uh, version of the soccer game that you can play online. You can play on the PC, so a uh, standalone, and you can play together online against uh, a PC player, so against an AI player in a kind of co-op mode um, we're now still working on implementing this one so the standalone game with uh, the PC um, opponents 
and uh, if you select that one you will go to the next screen where you need to select the uh, strength of the uh, opponent of the AI opponent you can set strength from 1 to 5 um, so then you're done but uh, if you choose uh, another mode uh, a multiplayer mode then you will also need to go to uh, to this screen where you can uh, enter your uh, your name because you are then multiplayer and uh, we want to show uh, your name so which player has won and that kind of stuff so only in the single player mode it's not that interesting to enter your name in the game so then we leave it out. So if we take a look at the uh, first screen where you select the game, these are actually buttons that you can create like this, but with an image on it. And uh, if you look at these buttons, they have an on click event where you can choose a game object. So uh, I chose from the scene um, canvas choose game. Um, so that's uh, this canvas and then here there is a script so um, that script has uh, functions that you can also call from within that event so um, if we choose here the canvas game object we can now select on game mode button click from this choose game uh, script and uh, that uh, code will be executed so let's take a look at that so if you go to the choose game script you can see that uh, we have here that on mode uh, game button click then um, if you enter that mode we set the game mode to a fixed value and we uh, disable this canvas and we go either to the um, computer strength canvas or to the input name canvas depending on uh, which uh, mode you choose if you choose the player versus PC mode uh, then we uh, don't need to input the name so we directly go to that um, canvas where you uh, enter the strength and uh, if you then enter the strength um, you do that by uh, selecting stars um, you can see that over here uh, if we enable the canvas again you can see the stars over there let's disable this for now um, you can click these stars actually they are also buttons so behind the star buttons is this uh, on star click event and then uh, we just uh, load in the uh, the scene of the the real game and it will start the game so and uh, when you uh, hover over the uh, the stars you at that point you already set the strength so that's already been set over here so then in the on click of uh, of this you only need to to load the scene we also over here when um, you hover over the um, the buttons you also, um, this is the on point enter, the, when you hover over the player versus player button. Then uh, we set the game mode at that moment. And, uh, and we also update the, uh, the highlighted uh, button. So uh, let me show you that. So you see that when we hover over the, uh, the buttons, they light up and uh, this code is taking care of that one final thing I want to mention is this uh, this is a, a separate uh, canvas which you can see over here uh, this canvas has render mode world space and on here we have actually just uh, um, a 3d uh, object the ball that's also used in the game and we uh, have a script attached to it that will rotate that ball 
uh, and this canvas is showing on all the other canvases uh, no matter which one you have enabled um, so that gives you a nice uh, logo over here so if you uh, click for example on the uh, two player versus PC you need to enter your name and then the strength of the computer and then you go into the game this uh, mode is not working yet uh, only the mode uh, uh, human versus PC is uh, working in order to make the application even better looking we're going to add uh, post processing so I'm creating a global volume over here and I'm creating a new um, profile for the post processing I'm going to add override I'm going to add some bloom Let's set intensity to 3 and uh, we're also going to add um, some vignettes you can see the effect over here what it has you want to use it very subtle like this but you can see that's already a difference here this makes the edges a bit more dark and focuses your view to the center of the screen and finally we're gonna add uh, some color adjustments I like to uh, increase the contrast a bit you can see now it's much brighter so if we now run the game again you can see the difference uh, when I uh, switch on and off the uh, the global volume so um, so you can see here it uh, looks much nicer with the um, post processing on of course uh, if you are on a low spec uh, PC you may want to um, uh, disable the post processing let's display the game time on the screen so let's go to the canvas go into 2d mode we're gonna create a game object here called uh, game time and in here I'm gonna create a text I'm gonna call it uh, text game time and it's gonna be something like this and we're also gonna create uh, an image over here a white image and now we can uh, just put this first so we can see the uh, text and the image will be behind the text now we can set the um, the text color to black so it's already black no outline and I'm gonna choose Anton and set it to black now we're gonna place this uh, element in the upper right corner need to resize it a bit so um, we're also going to use auto size so just tick this box and so I think this is the proper size and then uh, we put the image behind it okay and uh, we also need to anchor it because if you don't anchor it I'll show you what happens um, if you now resize the screen so if you are on a different device this um, game time will be not in the right position so therefore we can just um, anchor the parent element over here in the upper right corner
so that's better so let's put it a little bit more to the to the right like this and now we can create a, a script for it we're gonna put that script in here and we're gonna call it a uh, game game timer I've opened the script let's first create a reference to the game timer text and uh, we can uh, get it like this because um, the text mesh component is on the same uh, game object as the uh, as the script is and then we can use this reference to set the text somewhere in the update function but first let's add a, a bit of code over here because we only want this update function to run if the, we are playing the game so then the timer is running otherwise we are returning now we need also a variable to keep track of uh, the current time so uh, let's call that time passed then we're gonna add uh, a constant for the game duration this is how long our game will take our soccer game will last for uh, 300 seconds so that's five minutes uh, I use a fixed time now later we can maybe make that a setting that you can play different times if you like but probably I will keep it like a fixed time about five minutes of gameplay for each match and uh, we need to record the start time so if we have that we can add a, a function um, in a timer that we will call from uh, our uh, game script and it will start uh, the, the timer and it will record the current time at that moment in the update function we can see how much time has passed and since the start time we just subtract that from the current time and then we have the time that's passed and if it's longer than the game duration then we are going to the next game state that's match over now what we still need to do is display the time so over here we can set the game time text um, but we want to set it with a value that represents a real soccer match a soccer match is 2 times 45 minutes so 90 minutes in total uh, so I'm gonna write a function for this I'm gonna call it convert time passed to 90 minutes and it looks like this so we use the time passed we see how much uh, percentage this time is of the total time it's the game duration and then we multiply that by 60 for the 60 uh, seconds in a minute and then by 90 for the 90 minutes so now we have the total time in seconds starting from zero until maximum 90 minutes then we split that into a minute part by dividing it by 60 uh, and the seconds part by using the modulo operator and then uh, we format that to two zeros and we add uh, um, a colon in between and then we finally have a nice display for the time so over here you can see how the time is increasing it's um, taking five minutes now to get to the 90 minutes so the seconds uh, is running very fast if you don't like it and find it disturbing distracting for the game then you can set it to zero uh, just like uh, this um, I just skip the, the seconds part and we'll do it like this 
So now we can just see the minutes uh, increasing. It's a bit less disturbing and it's uh, still uh, sufficient to uh, get an indication of uh, how far we are in the game. If you take a look at the dimensions of the football field, it is 4000 pixels. That's quite a lot. Um, therefore, we need to set the um, the properties of this texture to uh, a size of 4000 as well. You can see now that we can see much more detail on the field. As you can see here, the ball doesn't bounce but immediately drops to the ground. We can easily change that by creating a physics material. Um, so choose create physics material and then set the bounciness to one. And now we uh, are gonna select the ball. We have a sphere collider here and we can set the physics material. And now If we shoot again, you'll see that the ball will bounce. So that's all the features for today. In the next videos, we will complete this uh, soccer game and create a full mature game that you can enjoy playing. So watch out for my next videos and thanks for watching.